You often hear anglers asking the question, what is the toughest venue to tackle? Is it gravel pits, estate lakes, rivers or canals? Well for me it's most definitely the small waters. These venues might look easy because you know where the carp are, but they contain some of the craftiest fish going. In this month's vlog, I'm going to look at my approach to fishing these waters during a short trip to a tiny farm pond on the outskirts of Bradford. It's run by successful northern angler Rhys Lyle, and before we get into the fishing, we'll have a quick chat with the man himself to find out a bit more about the venue. Right then, I'm sat here with Reese, who's had the lake for a few years now, mate. You're a local lad. Tell us a little bit about the water. Well, Proxy Lake's probably around about 20 years, 20 years old. As Sam has just said, I've had it for about four years now, in March coming. Yeah. Between 28 and 32 fish in the pool. Yeah, it's a good stock, mate, that is, isn't it? Yeah, for the size of the pool, it's, you know, it's a good stock. Yeah, uh, yeah. Have you got any good ones in here? What's the, what's the lake record? At the moment, the lake record is a fish called the Duchess, which is a fully scaled mirror. Cool. 30, 30 pound. That's a cracker for Yorkshire, that is. Yeah, it's a good fish, mate, especially for around here. Like, there's, yeah, there's, yeah. Um, so, uh, how big is it, mate? It looks, it looks about an acre and a half, about the same sort of size as Spitfire Pool. Yeah, it's roughly around about 1.3, 1 1.4 acres. It's one of them waters, what's nice and intimate. and They're tricky, you know, mate. Little yeah, waters are tricky, yeah, aren't they? You know, like, like, like we've spoke before, mate, you know, the, the smaller waters are a lot trickier than the big waters, like, because yeah. they tend to know your ear constantly, like, so. You've got a small syndicate on here, haven't you? Yeah, the 20 lad syndicate. Yeah. We have that for three weeks of the month, and then one week of the month, I do a week of, like, lake exclusives, whether it be for the full week or, like, 40 hours or 24 hours, just obviously depending on what the yeah. uh, customers are wanting, like. So, uh, basically, they just contact you through your website, Yeah, just through, through, Facebook, through Facebook, Facebook or yeah. Instagram, or on my, on my own Facebook page, can sort some dates out. Uh, basically take a deposit for that and then the remaining gets paid on, on the day that they come. Yeah, we're right in the middle of winter at the minute but I can imagine in the summer and looking at some of the pictures that I know are on your Facebook page, it's an absolutely stunning water, lots of weed and yeah, it's, lots of it's, greenery. It's, it's lovely in summer like, you know, I've spent, like I say, four, nearly four years of my life down here trying to get it out. I'd want it if I were coming to fish it. Yeah. Obviously with you being here yourself you know it's a nice quiet place like it's a lovely picturesque venue in a lovely valley mate so i'm really looking forward to fishing it yeah it's, i'm glad to have you down mate it's, see how we get on eh? yeah definitely mate yeah see how we go on cheers so i'm just gonna have a quick walk around then before i get myself set up i've only got about an hour of daylight left so uh, i'm pushing it really but it's always important to have a walk around on these small waters because all the disturbance that I want to make, I'm going to do right at the beginning because as soon as I drive the car into a car park on a lake like this, they know I'm here. And you know, this lake's right in the middle of nowhere. There's not a great deal of noise down here at all. So when you arrive and you start walking around the banks, you put the carp on edge. I've fished a lot of these small waters over the years and in more recent years, Spitfire Pool, Dorford Lake we fished last year with Avid and you know those carp are very very spooky so the fishing is very very difficult and as soon as you arrive if you make too much noise you just put them on edge but luckily i've got a few days ahead of me so i'm going to do all my disturbance now and um, get it over and done with and then just put the rods out and sit back and keep quiet because stealth is so so important for small water there's actually quite a lot of nice visual features to fish to certainly on this bank here there's a nice set of reeds that run from the top corner up there down into this bottom corner here and it looks like there could be a marginal shelf as well which is always going to be worth investigating because I'm sure if there is the carp will use that to patrol from one end of the lake to the other but uh, from looking at it the main features are going to be those big islands out in the middle which I'm fairly sure that most carp anglers who arrive here are going to want to put a rod towards those and from what Reese is telling me other than that you might get the odd bit of weed on the bottom and I think he said there was a nice set of lilies over in that corner as well which are always going to be a bit of a magnet to the carp at the right time of the year but uh, from my own experience of fishing these small waters you tend to find the main features are the slight deeper depressions on the bottom you know a little bit of a an area that's maybe a foot or so deeper than the surrounding lake bed now these kind of areas they call them carp holes and they're created through the carp flanking on the bottom or even foraging for snails and bloodworm and that kind of food so if you can find those they're always going to be a, a banker rod for you and over the years I've found quite a few of them on small waters up in Emmetland that I used to fish a few years ago that had a couple of them on pond three there was one on pond two that I remember about if I can find one on here 
that's definitely going to be worth pointing a rod. But what I don't want to do though is get the marker float out and start spooking the carp too much. So uh, I've got my bait boat with me. I know people might laugh about that because it's a small water, but you know the last thing I want to be doing is just telling the carp that I'm here. It's just not the way forward on a water like this. You've just got to keep things nice and discreet. And okay, if I'm fishing really close in, I can just drop them over the edge. That's what I did at the Spitfire Pool. You was fishing really close in, just on the edge of the weed. You could drop the rigs out nice and quietly. But here, I don't know yet, but I might need to fish a little bit beyond close in. So, you know, in that case, I'd rather just get the bait boat out and just drop it out nice and quietly. It's certainly going to be very enjoyable fishing here, but I know it's going to be pretty tricky because these small waters, they've always got spooky carp in them. And I know how spooky they can be. So I've actually brought with me two pairs of different shoes because we're in winter, I need to be nice and warm and the kind of boots that I'm going to be using in the swim I don't want to be wearing while I'm walking around the lake because it's just going to make too much noise. So I've got a nice pair of lightweight shoes on at the moment and when I'm actually sat down in the bivvy that's when the winter boots will come out and I can keep my feet nice and dry and nice and warm which is always important at this time of the year because you need to be full of confidence. So. Uh, yeah, I think what I'm going to do is set up on that far side over there and we're then going to get the bait boat out and quickly have a scout around and see if we can find any features to fish to. Well, that was definitely interesting and Reese is right it is a very very shallow lake the majority of the depth is about three four foot but I've found a nice area that's about six foot just off the corner of that island there it's about here this sort of area here and it's a really really nice looking spot nice and clean on the bottom and that's definitely gonna have a rod and the other area that I found that is very interesting is between these two islands here just off the corner of that island to that island there right in the middle there is a lovely clean area about four and a half five foot and that is definitely going to have a rod so yeah got two nice areas which i think is where i'm going to start with and as far as the third rod's concerned i think that's probably going to go pretty close into one of the margins over there where reese tells me there's a bit of an inlet pipe that has in the past done some decent fish so that's somewhere to definitely start off with so uh, yep let's go and get the gear sorted get the rods out and then get the kettle on <laughs> As you can tell, we're right in the depths of winter at the moment, so I'm not going to be putting a great deal of bait out because I can tell from the colour of the water, which is very clear, that the fish aren't moving about a great deal, so they're certainly not going to be feeding much. So I'm just going to be using a light scattering of bait around each hook bait, and the rig that I'm going to be using is the same rig that I use wherever I go. All I've done is just scale things down a little bit. I'm using a 15 pound hook link and a size six hook. And then on the end of that, I'm going to be using a single DNA PB wafter, nice and bright, very visual and very smelly as well. These are a fruity bait and I'm a massive fan of using fruity baits in the winter months. And around each hook bait, all I'm going to be doing is scattering a handful of sweet corn. Carp love sweet corn. I know from speaking to Reese that there's no roosters fishing here, so I can definitely get away with using that. It's nice and sweet and lovely smell to it, which carp love in the winter. And alongside that, I'm just going to be putting a handful of maggots out as well. We all know about wrigglers in the winter, that movement of the bait, it seems to attract the fish and these aren't too old, they're only a couple of weeks old, so there's still plenty of life in them. And I'm just going to be putting a handful of that around the, uh, the sweet corn and the hook bait. 
and then sending it out to the areas that I'm going to be fishing. So nice and simple and hopefully it will work for me. Another good tip, don't take a dog fishing with you when you're on a small lake because she makes too much noise. Keep quiet, we're trying to catch carp close in so we don't need any barking and she's just been eating her dinner down there and god god the noise she was making. She was licking the bowl and making it move all over the place. It was banging into the tent pegs. It was ding, 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 ding. I'm trying to keep as quiet as I can. There's an horse in the next door field. And she just keeps going mad at it. That is like a block of ice, but it's very welcome on what is a very cold winter's evening. A 28 pound mirror and one happy carp angler. I know someone's going to ask the question, why have I got my rod tips in the air? And it's mostly to do with, it's a very, very shallow water, this place. And I want to get as much line as possible out of the water, including slack line. Just don't want it there. And as you can see, with this rod, I've got it here, just pointing towards the corner of that island. Now, I'm actually fishing right behind the island, almost next to the other corner of the island. And... What you've got is a very gradual slope from those reeds down to the depth that I'm fishing, which is six foot. So the idea is there's a bit of line in the water just by those reeds, but the rest of it is just going down the contours of the marginal drop off of the island. So it's going to be well hidden from the fish. And it's mostly where the fish are at the moment in between this island and that one to the right there. I've done the same with that rod as well. And then my third rod, which I've got just down there, Again, that's doing pretty much the same, but towards the island over there. So hopefully there's very little line actually in the water itself that the carp can come into contact with. Most of it's on the bottom, and if there is any that's in the water, it's just sticking up a couple of feet from top to bottom, rather than having a great big long line stretched to here. If I had my rod tips under the water, they'd be just lying all the way out towards here and where the island is. And as you can imagine, on a small lake like this, that is going to tell the carp exactly what is going on. I get asked about slack lining and do we use it and stuff, and of course I do. And it's mostly when I'm fishing very close into the margins at my feet that I use it, but I'm fishing towards the back end of both of those islands, and there's some decent sized fish in here, which when they pick the bait up, even though it's winter, they can still take me around the back of the island. So I need to know that my sensitivity of my setup is top notch, and with tight lining, it's been proven time and time again that the sensitivity you set up is a lot better. So once something's picked up the, the rig at that end, you're going to know that something's happening at this end, the tighter that line is. With slack lining, there's a chance that you're not going to get a very good indication, and by then, the fish could be around the back of the island, and it's a lost personal best. So for me, it's tight lining all the way when I'm fishing to, to dodgy areas, to snags, to weed, etc., and it's mostly slack lining when I'm fishing in the margins of my feet. And at the moment, 
I'm not fishing like that, so the tight lining approach is what I've gone for. I've got the monster shelter with me for this trip, and believe me, I'm so glad I brought it. This is the HQ Jewel Layer from Avid. There you go, there's the name, and it gets its name because it's got an inner capsule which gives it two layers. Now this inner capsule can stay in there so you can pack it away with it in there. Unlike using an overwrap where you have to carry a separate bag and obviously keep attaching it every time. And I don't know if you can see how clear it is, but there's no condensation in there at all. Obviously at this time of the year when you're normally fishing in the winter, you just get loads of condensation. It drips down on your, your head if you've not got that dual layer capabilities, but this one is really, really nice bivy. It's a massive bivy inside. That's the Benchmark X bed chair, and we all know how big that is, so there's plenty of space either side, and you've got loads of space here at the front as well. I've got my tackle bag down there, my waders, I've got the bait boat down there, my food bag. There's enough space in here for me and the dog as well, so it really is a massive bivy. The footprint is, is really large, but you know, it is a big bivy, but it's very, very comfortable, and it's great for old blokes like me who like sitting on the bed chair and looking out the bivy door without having to crouch down and get an aching back you know i'm just sitting back and it is very very comfortable and with the benchmark x as well this is quite a high bed chair so my, my legs are nice and comfortably down they're not all scrunched up and i'm not all skew with it's like these low profile shelters and bed chairs you get this one is absolutely ideal for blokes my age and it is super comfortable so we'll have a quick look outside and it comes complete with your ground sheet all your bars your pegs and there's loads of different options for pegging as you can see around it and there's loads of options with the shelter itself it's got a airflow panel at the back here which has got three different interiors it's got the outer material it's then got the inner capsule and then there's a mosquito panel as well now you can strip this shelter back as much as you want to, you can take the front infill panel off and you can have just a mosquito panel if you wanted to, or a clear plastic panel. You can even have just the inner capsule down if you wanted to. But if you stripped it all the way back and you took the ground sheet out, you took the front panel off, honestly it weighs next to nothing. But uh, as a complete shelter, it is quite heavy, that's the only downside to it, but believe me, it is so comfortable, it's definitely worth carrying that extra bit of weight if you've got the comfort on the bank. Well, it was another really mega cold night last night, and as you can see from me just talking, it's uh, it's still cold now. It's probably about minus two, minus three, and I'm surprised the lake hasn't frozen, but it is due to get warm today, so we could, uh, see something happen on these rods you never know but um, it's been interesting fishing so far and very typical of small waters because I had the action of that first bite on the first day and since then I've not had anything despite seeing fish over the spot that I caught from on that first day you know I've seen carp rolling over that area I've seen some big echoes on the echo sand on the bait boat so I know there's carp down there but it is typical of small waters that when you've caught a fish from a spot that you might not get another bit of action from that spot for several weeks several months and indeed several years you know these carp they do mark these areas because they're going round and round the lake all the time they know what danger is they know what people are they know what anglers are all about and from what Reese is telling me this lake is actually quite a, a rich water so there's quite a lot of food in here so the carp don't need to take anglers baits and it doesn't surprise me that some of the residents in here don't get caught very often at all I think there's one fish in here called the beauty which is an absolute stunner I think uh, Reese was telling me it only gets caught once, sometimes maybe twice a year, and um, you know, it is a difficult water. It's very typical of a of small venues because you know these fish they go around and mark the areas that are dangerous and then just leave them well alone. So, if I was going to be fishing here consistently, I think the way that I'd approach it is to trickle baiting on a regular basis and trying to get the confidence of the fish onto the bait. But at the moment, you know, this is a one off trip for me, so I've been pretty lucky to have caught and I still have got 24 hours left, so uh, you never know, I might get another chance if I'm lucky.
there you go. That just proves that what we've been talking about in this film certainly works. 27 pound mirror from a tiny lake in very, very cold, tough conditions. Hope you've enjoyed watching. <laughs>